Now, we are 40% done with understanding how to animate these short form videos. Yes, you heard that right. 40% done. I am saying this because learning the 12 principles of animation will jumpstart your animation journey tenfold. Because you will be working your way up, building upon those fundamentals. Alright then, let's continue with this lesson on understanding the overall interface. However, this is the point where I would advise you to take out your notebook or digital note taking application. Because from here on out, we are going to be diving straight into it. We'll quickly be skimming through the tools required for us to start creating our animations. Remember, our goal is to get you to start creating your own animation in the shortest time possible. So, to begin, the software that you are seeing on the screen right now is named Adobe After Effects. And this is the software that we are going to be using throughout our course. I'll close the software so that way we can start from the beginning. The application starts loading up. We are going to be using After Effects 2023, which is also the latest update from Adobe at the moment, with tons of new amazing features, some of which I feel are highly usable, others not so much. Alright, this screen right here is called as the home screen, and it shows you all the projects that you have been working upon, as of till date. With that, we also have two more buttons on the left side of the screen, which lets us create a new project or open an older project of After Effects that we have worked upon earlier using the Open Project button. We are going to be clicking on New Project, and with that, we are in the software. From this day onwards, when this screen opens for you, I want you to remember that these tools they are your teammates. Ready for you to instruct them on how you are going to unleash your creativity today. Use the software to its maximum potential, exploring new ways and techniques unique to yourself and remember, have fun. We'll be starting to understand the software from the top down and the first thing is the navigation bar. We'll be using this quite often than not, only to apply effects or save or export our files. My style of editing or animating focuses heavily on using keyboard shortcuts and macro keys. We have got a lesson coming up on macro keys next. That will be something that will definitely blow your mind. Coming down from the navigation panel, we have our toolbar. These are your teammates. From a footballer's perspective, they are there to assist you. However, you are the one to score the goal. We'll be learning about these as we start animating soon. Below the toolbar, we have three divided windows, two on each side of the screen, which has two buttons. Starting from the middle, this is where we get to see how our animation is going to look like as we edit. There are also two buttons on the screen. One of them says new composition and the other says new composition from footage. To understand composition, let's assume an example. An artist is almost done arranging his frame on which he is to draw upon the Eiffel Tower. Why are we in Paris all of a sudden? Stop interrupting. Wait. If we are to assume the situation to be relevant with the software we are about to work with, then the artist is our student who is watching this course and the frame he is going to be working upon is the composition. Does that make sense now? It does, but we started with opening a new project, didn't we? Should that project not be the canvas of our animator here? I have been asked this question tons of time before and to answer that composition and project both are completely different elements. Let's go back to our example. Let's only focus on the canvas now. I mentioned that the frame of the artist is the composition. Let's divide them into two. The first layer being the canvas and the second being the frame on which the canvas is placed. For understanding the question, let's assume the canvas to be the project and the frame to be what it was, the composition. To explain this best, the artist can choose a specific canvas for a project for him to work upon. However, to give it shape and form, he has to restrict himself with a frame so that he can understand the creative guidelines better. Here, in our case, the artist can frame the animation using composition, making it vertical like the animations I have been creating or horizontal like the one you are watching right now. Then, when the artist is done with his masterpiece, he will save his artwork somewhere among other canvases. That is our project. We can move or copy or email or send it over to someone using a pen drive strapped to a pigeon like them old times. That file inside the pen drive is called as a project. 
we'll be understanding the importance of folder management and file organization in the coming sections however let's move on to how we can create our first composition inside of the software okay we have just written from understanding the middle screen if we shift our attention from the left side right there that is the project panel the simplest way to understand this panel is to understand it as the area where you import search and organize assets in your after effects projects everything you are to use in after effects has to be imported into the software first before we can start using it in our timeline which brings us down to the timeline itself this right here is the one panel where me and you we both are going to be spending an eternity together this is where the animation happens this is where we create layers and keyframe everything together using the graph editor working speed and time wait wait i'm getting too far ahead of myself here let's stick to the basics for now also i remember that we did not talk about the panel on the right you do know this is scripted right like i am writing the script before recording the screen to start your animation journey we are to create the composition to do that we click on the most obvious button ever thank you adobe new composition we are now greeted with the new pop up which has tons of options on it if we refer back to our example we are to consider creating the composition as of our frame for the canvas which refers to selecting the size of the frame we are to work with when you click the drop down menu you will find that the software already has some pre built composition presets ready for us to use since we are mainly going to be creating animations for social media meaning vertical videos we are going to select the option social media portrait and hit enter on my keyboard to open up a new composition to verify that we actually have created our first animation if we look over to our project panel we can see that a new file has appeared into it like a new pokemon that symbol right there is the symbol unique to composition meaning whenever you see this icon you'll know that this is an editable file a file which can be edited as soon as we open up a new composition we can notice that the entire software has come alive but before we dive deeper into the software we are to do a very important part of the process we are going to save the project file with the composition that we just created so that way when we close the software our data is saved within the file to be reopened later to do this i use the shortcut key control shift s or command shift s for our mac users remember to do this every time before you start with any project and control s to save your projects regularly when you initiate the save command with your keyboard a pop up opens asking for instructions on where to save the project file of ours for now you will be saving this project file on the desktop when you understand file management and organization either delete this file or move this file into that folder that you will be creating later down the line moving onwards we have now saved our file and created our composition now the fundamental state that every good artist must be aware and fairly acquainted with the tools he will be using we start with understanding the tools that we are going to be using throughout the course as you all might be familiar with my style of animating these videos is preferring a circle to explain or make sense of the audio recording we are sticking to that because i prefer everything kept as simple as possible the first tool that we are to use is the shape tool this tool right here is what inspired me to start creating these particular animations if we click on the icon the tool becomes active however if we click and hold on the button a drop down appears before us these shape tools help us create solid shapes in the software for example if we have the ellipse shape tool selected we can draw an ellipse on the screen doing that will do two things one you have now successfully created a shape inside the software congratulations on that two you can now see a shape layer is now added onto your timeline this blue layer holds all the properties of the shape layer that you have just created what do you mean by properties if we are to click the arrow beside the layer we get to see the content inside the layer that we just created and the transform properties which if we are to open that we see the position scale rotation and many more variables these all together are what i call properties now these properties have a special ability to save the values at a given moment in time on the timeline this is called as keyframing 
If we are to click on the stopwatch button, we get a diamond shaped button on the timeline. That icon is a keyframe. As I mentioned before, a keyframe saves the value of the property we have chosen to save or keyframe. If we move ahead in time and increase the value of the property, we see that another keyframe has been added onto the timeline which saved the value of the property that we have changed. I know, confusing right? Try this on your own. Go on, open the software, pause this video, try it out on your own. Take notes of what you have learned so far because this is a pivotal point in the journey. Like every game has a checkpoint, consider this to be one for this particular lesson. Let's continue or pause the video right here and come back to it later. To summarize, we understood how to create and save a project, make a new composition and created our first shape layer and keyframed it on two different values. We'll be coming back to the secrets of keyframes in a later video. For now, let's move on to the second tool that we will be using to drag and arrange everything that we see on the screen. That tool is the V tool or the move tool. V being it's the short key but I assume you already know that. Then there is the tool called as the anchor point tool. Its short key is Y and we will be using it solely to adjust the anchor point in our layers. The next tool is the pen tool and its short key is G. The pen tool is a very useful piece of equipment because you can draw freehand on the canvas or using a reference image. We'll get to know about this tool soon. Then there are plugins that we are to be using for the entirety of the course. We are going to be using the plugin named Deep Glow which is used in my animation to add a glowy effect to the shape being created. The second plugin is called as Newton 3, a physics based software used for creating realistic animations. We will be exploring both of these as we move ahead in our course. On to our last panel of the day, the effects panel. This panel includes a library of effects, some of which are going to be essential in our process of creating these animations. When we click on the search bar, we can search for any specific effect that we require for the animation. For example, with the shape that we have just created, I feel like it should have been blurred a bit. To do that, I search for the effect named Gaussian Blur. Then drag that effect from the effects panel onto the timeline, applying it over our layer. How do we see that the effect has been applied on our layer? Making sure that the layer is selected, we hop onto the effect controls panel which may be besides the project panel. If it is not active on your screen or if any of the panels that we are going to be using moving ahead is missing, I want you to remember that you can go to this windows button and the drop down would show you everything that might be being shown or hidden or closed from the workspace that you are working on. Coming back to the topic at hand, once you have effect controls open on your screen, what I want you to do now is increase the blur value by quite a number. Let's do this about 50. This is how we can edit the effects we have applied on our layers. We can also do the exact changes in the layer from the timeline itself by using the drop down menu after clicking on this small icon. When you open this up, it shows the same exact properties that we are being shown in the effect controls panel. Now you may be wondering, so how? Why tell us of two ways to edit the keyframes if we already have one on the timeline itself? Great question. I prefer you understand both the ways because in my experience, working on a macro level with the keyframes, I prefer changing the properties and keyframe it on the timeline itself. However, to adjust the properties of a specific element relating it to the entire animation is something that I prefer to do with the effect controls panel more like a bigger picture of the entire animation to make sense of this. You will be developing these skills very soon, all the very best. Moving on, let's do an exercise using all the information we have learned so far. Our base task for this lesson is to create a new shape and animate any two or three properties in it. This is what we are going to be doing. Select the shape tool, rectangle, ellipse, anything works. Here's a small tip. Write this down in your notebook or your digital take note taking application. When you are drawing a shape on your screen, it is always going to follow the shape that you make using your mouse. To create a perfect symmetrical shape, hold shift on your keyboard after you click on the screen. That way, you will be able to create perfect shapes on your screen too. Another button to learn is the Alt plus shift button along with the shape tool. Alt plus shift for windows. Option plus shift for Mac users. If we delete this shape and click to create a new shape, 
This time I am going to hold down the buttons Alt plus Shift. Now you can notice that the shape is being created from the anchor point. This comes handy when animating. And I want you to write this down somewhere. Okay, now that we have got that out of the way, let's continue with our animation. Make a shape. One shape will do for now, however you may increase the number of shapes after you are done with the first assignment. And here's your first assignment. We have a shape layer created on our screen, right? I want you to copy the composition in your project panel and paste it again, right there. Do this until you have a total of 5 composition files. They should be numbered, so no confusion whatsoever. What we are going to do is think of ideas that we can be animating on these particular shapes. For reference, with the first animation, I want to show the shape to move from one position to another position in a period of 3 seconds. To do that, I have to bring the timeline bar to 0 seconds first. Then we can go into the properties of this layer from this icon or we can simply press P on our keyboards to bring up the position properties of the layer that we have selected. This only works if you have a specific layer selected. Likewise, here are some important short keys. I suggest you write these down too. You already saw that P is for position. Changing the values on the left will make the layer move on the x-axis, meaning horizontally. Likewise, changing the values on the right will make the shape layer move on the y-axis, meaning vertically. Simple, right? When we press the button S on our keyboards, we open up the scale property of our layer. The scale defines the size of the layer that we have created. If you increase its value, the size of the layer increases. Likewise, if we decrease the value, the size decreases. Moving on. If we hit R on our keyboard, we can open up the rotation property and the final button is T. T is for opacity of the layer, but because the short key to this is T, it can also be called as the transparency of this layer. Opacity lets us define the transparency of the layer being selected. Since we are going to be animating the position property, we are going to click on the stopwatch button to activate the keyframe and save the property at 0 seconds. We want the shape to move somewhere, so we go to 3 seconds and hit V on our keyboard and move the shape where we desire it to be. Doing that, saved another property through a keyframe on the timeline. Now if we are to play this back, we can see that the shape has started moving in the direction we set it to be. These steps may seem very easy to watch, however consistency of your practice will define the speed at which you will be doing these animations. After we are done with this, Double click the second composition in your project panel to open it up on your timeline. Once your second composition is opened up, I want you to do something completely random with this one. Play around. Get to know the keyframing and the properties. Dig as deep as you could in this one because we'll be diving deep into the course from here on out. Add some effect as I did in the first one. Keyframe that too. For example, if I am to apply Gaussian Blur to the shape layer, and what I seek from applying this effect is to show the shape to be blur at first and becomes clear down the line. For this, I use the effect controls panel. Using the value button, I change the value to 50. Keyframe that. Move over to a later part of the timeline and set the value to 0. Playing this back will enable us to see that the shape layer was blur in the beginning and becomes clear at the end. Do this 5 times in total. I'll be going in depth for each of the property we have discussed here later down the course. For now, let's focus on getting you guys to be familiar with what we are going to be working with here. Go crazy. I'll catch you guys in the next lesson. Happy animating.